Put some guys to strike that we survived snow apocalypse, so we can review this. This is the Helios or Helios uh, XVIII, which means that it's coming out this year, obviously. Uh, 700 is part of the Phantom Core line, and this is the spiritual successor to the Apollo in a lot of ways. So I went ahead and brought out a Phantom Core Apollo and the 12 rounder that the Phantom Core Apollo came with, although I've loaded it with Dart Zone high impact rounds, and I did that specifically because I think that they are a little bit nicer. I, I like them a lot. So I wanted to test the compatibility and I wanted to get this out of the package. So in the package, you can see that it's going to be very similar to the Apollo and it's got the kind of difference in stock. And of course, the major difference is this priming mechanism. Now, this is going to be a little bit different down here in terms of its magazine release and safety, but Overall, just a much better version of the Apollo. Now we've got the Kronos over here. Uh, so this should be out very soon, as well as the Phantom Core face mask. Uh, this guy's actually using the blaster, which is nice. And here's one using it up here. So they have actually uh, included those. Now we've got both of the flags. I'm always losing stuff. Wow, it's so incredibly cold. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when all of the ice leaves, right guys? Uh, but here we have, like I said, Phantom Core Apollo, not Apollo, <laughs> Helios, shoot. We'll go ahead and crack it out of the package. So we've got the priming bar down here as a separate piece. I guess that means that we get to choose what side it goes on. I hope that we do. Ambidextrous blasters are always better received. That's one of the really cool things about the Strife, and it is the worst thing about the long shot. So let's go ahead and pop that out as well. And it only comes with seven rounds. That's, again, a big thing that uh, Hasbro's been doing recently. They do not give you enough to load the blaster more than once. Sometimes they don't even give you enough to load the extra capacity of the blaster. But the rival line is to me like kind of a premium product and I've always thought that that's really strange. So we've got tack rail, priming bolt, trigger lock, trigger magazine release, and magazine. So let's go ahead, load this up. Whee! Fun trick for loading rival rounds there, guys, is you can just shove the magazine down on top of them. And true to form, this does appear to be ambi. Now I am right-handed, which means that I'm going to shove this in here. And I think that that is how it goes in. So excellent, that is locked and loaded. Now again, something really nice about this is that you pull it back and let it slide forward. For a quick size comparison, that's about where these blasters line up side to side. Although I will be doing a full versus video in the future, so I don't want to focus on that too terribly much. I just brought this out so that you guys could see that it is functionally different. A much heavier blaster as well. So let's go ahead and load this up with the rounds that it came with, interestingly enough. Itty bitty jam door here. And then we've got the safety down here. No fire, fire. No fire, fire. Excellent. This is probably some sort of depriming mechanism. And then we've got a priming indicator here in the back, letting you know that this is all the way back and primed. Now that's interesting that the retraction there did not actually pull around into the chamber and you saw I had to bump it just a little bit. So let's uh, shoulder this. This is a very nicely contoured stock and it's actually pretty comfortable. This is not necessarily a foregrip, but you have to put your hand somewhere, right guys? And that is as we have come to expect from Rival. So is that all the way forward this time? It is. So this is definitely nicer in that you do not have to ratchet forward. This is a solid rival springer now. It is of note, and I'm just going to make mention of this in this video. I'll also go in depth in the comparison video that uh, this is only uh, $10 less than the Artemis, or at least where I've been buying Artemis is at a lot recently has been around that $40 mark, and this is uh, 30 So keep that in mind. I think that the Artemis is also a really nice blaster. However, it doesn't come with flags, obviously. So let's go ahead and throw this on. You could choose to put the red flag on your Helios, or you could choose to put the wrong flag on your Helios. That is, of course, a choice that you can make. And as I think you can slip it on here, I believe that it also might fit on here. Let's just test that to be sure. We are revealing, uh, reviewing this as an unmodified product directly out of the box. So can it do the thing that it should do, which is to say, load 
uh, this flag on. Um, barely. I mean, it does a passable job, I suppose. And then bumping this down there, and it will drop that magazine. So that's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and load it up, and we'll estimate some ranges here from standing. So standing shot, forward, and fire. Again, pretty standard rival ranges. We've got a drop off right at about the 70 foot mark there, angled shots. Ooh, almost century mark there. So that's like 90, 95. And I mean, this is dart zone ammo. I do really like it. It's very accurate. Could hit that tree. Missed that tree, darn. Where's the hop up tab? There is not a hop up tab. Obviously this one is a Springer. There we go, that's a direct hit. And then here, right on the pot. So like, what about our painting towel down there? Too low. Direct. So overall a solid blaster. Is it worth 30 United States dollars? There are so many good rival blasters out there right now between the Kronos coming out very soon. You could essentially get a Deadpool Kronos for the same price as this blaster, or you could start looking at the upgrades. And by upgrades, I mean like the flywheel blasters or the Artemis. I think that the Artemis is still to date the best rival Springer. So that is just a, a good like indicator of what a rival Springer should be. Now this is certainly better than the previous thing, and I'll do a full comparison at some point, but I want this to be a review of just the Helios in its stock form. And in its stock form, it does a good job of picking teams for rival. It has multiple places that are visible to put the flags on it. It has the seven round magazine for a very low profile. I think that it's interesting that they chose to use the seven round magazine for this product when it seemed like they had all but phased it out, including uh, not putting it in the new iteration of the Apollo, but it is what it is. I dramatically prefer the safety on this. This is very similar to a firearm safety, although admittedly, I have never met a nerfer who really uses the safety on their rival blasters. I think that it's something that Hasbro includes exclusively for legal purposes. I've never met anybody who's like, oh man, that's a desirable feature on my blaster. So that is what it is. However, uh, ergonomically, this is an ambidextrous blaster. The handle is quite comfortable. It's actually very nice. It's very large. I can wrap my fingers uh, all the way around and not fully grip it, which means that it will fit any hand uh, larger than mine very easily, and then uh, smaller hands might have a tougher time manipulating this. But that's why rival products are pitched to ages 14 and up and not children. This is definitely not a child blaster. That spring prime is stiff, and the overall performance is much uh, not necessarily even harder, but since the projectile is larger, it impacts in a slightly different way. So would not necessarily recommend this for child usage. However, as a Springer style rifle blaster, this is a good indicator of a blaster that had maybe perhaps built in obsolescence and they fixed everything to make a much more polished production level product later on down the line. This is what I feel like the Apollo always should have been and is much nicer. Now, again, we've also got the Artemis and other things, so I don't know if it's worth 30 United States dollars, but when it goes on sale, this is definitely worth picking up. I kind of have an idea of how I could do wield these by ooh, or I could ooh ah I, I've got a lot of really good ideas for how I'm going to modify this one so eventually there might be a modification guide for this one as a standalone and then there might be something special now that I'm thinking about uh, other things but thank you guys very much for watching as always much love nerf on drag out let me know in the comment section below if you're going to pick one of these up and if you are going to pick one of them up it really helps me out a ton if you hit up that Amazon link in the description box. I get a slight kickback if you buy it on Amazon and the shipping is free. Tough to beat.